Hi, friends. Another brush video coming at you and thank you for your suggestions that you commented under my get ready with me as I was describing me having a hard time figuring out what to film next. So I do have a foundation brush video as well as a shader eye brush video. I wanted to now do cheek brushes. This might be my favorite category. Did I say that for foundation brushes? I forgot. I think it's because from two point of views, the versatility behind a cheek cheek highlight brush in terms of you are able to use a this type of a brush for powdering under the eyes all over the face and then blush highlight and bronzer and also you don't necessarily have to spend more money on a powder brush that is larger and uses more bristles therefore more expensive you can still have those powder moments with a cheek brush so the sheer versatility uh, more financially practical, right? So that's why I gravitate towards cheek brushes. But also I think me using a cheek brush of this caliber or wide caliber spectrum here is when I was applying bronzer, blush, and highlight, especially blush and bronzer in a way that it didn't appear muddy. Back early on when I started beauty YouTube, I wasn't using the best brushes. Maybe I wasn't using the best makeup also. So those variables I felt led to suboptimal blending on my complexion. It was like I felt hit or miss every time I approached the cheek step in applying bronzer and or blush is like, ooh, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. I was introduced to Fude, that is brush in Japanese, and the difference between using premium grade hair versus not using bristles that were hand bundled and not cut, I realized the importance of a tool and how it can change your entire world, how it can ensure a seamless application experience no matter the circumstances. And I have such a wide spectrum I wanted to share and I made myself edit because this video will be <laughs> like two hours long if I covered all of my cheek brushes in my entire collection. I want it to be slightly impulsive, meaning when I opened the drawer, I saw the brushes, I picked the ones that in that moment I had impact, I, I felt inspiration, I was like, yes because of that reason, because of that reason. So I have a few, few here to share. They don't go in any particular order, but there will be timestamps, the brush brand, the type of brush. So if you wanted to check out that list and not have to see the whole video, you can go down below in the description box. I'll also pin the list to a pin comment in the comment section if that's helpful to you as well. We got Luffy helping us out today. I wrote out, all the brushes that are in front of me don't fall. I want to know right now, what will it be? First up, we have Chico Hodo's RC2 Round Gray Squirrel. I like this brush. I think it's mid-tier in terms of the pricing, affordable, if you're looking to spend a little bit more on a cheek brush. And what I adore about this design is its versatility. It's round, it has a dome shape. Gray Squirrel, let's start with what Gray Squirrel can do for you. A beautifully silky type of hair that doesn't have as a robust pickup and lay down as goat hair, but it's incredibly soft. So if you do have sensitive skin or you're one to prefer a lighter application of color on the cheeks, Gray Squirrel is the way to go. However, if it's bundled like this, if it's this type of density, you have a little bit of that goat hair moment that is not so floppy that it might pick up a little more than if it didn't have as much hair bundled in the ferrule, which gives you more opportunity to lay down color, but it still is beautifully nuanced and soft. The edges are instantly blurred. It just feels so smooth against the skin. And then you have the splay, which despite the smaller brush head size, it 
it covers a beautiful surface area on your cheeks, but then is round to fit beautifully into the hollows if you want more precise placement of maybe a contour color, or you could swirl and twirl bronzer if you wanted that wider application, because I know people might gravitate towards a bigger brush for bronzer since it envelops more surface area at one time, but I do love to use a cheek brush for bronzer because I want that control. I, if I want it more precision, I can have it. If I want it more of a blown out application, the cheek brush still allows for that. And having a silky type of a brush like Gray Squirrel allows that movement to happen on the skin without disrupting what's underneath. It's not going to move around your foundation or your powder previously applied. That's the advantage of using a gray squirrel brush. The smoothness of it and how it glides over your skin without disrupting your makeup application, but just beautifully lays down color evenly and impeccably, please. I can go on, but I'll continue. So Nuji's soft cheek brush. This is dyed psycho goat hair. So not as soft as squirrel, but still soft. It's in that in-between lane in terms of of the softness factor on the spectrum. But what I adore about Soft Cheek, and you can see the comparison in terms of bristle length here with the Chikohoro, is that it has a longer bristle shape. It is still round in the ferrule and has moderate density, but has beautiful flow. So you can use this for all over powder as well, but it has that versatility to beautifully place blush on the cheeks in a way that just envelops that part of your face well and deposits it in that flushed manner, especially if you like to wear blush lower inner part of your face versus higher, but it has that capability of placing the blush higher in a sculpted fashion because of the dome shape. It fits beautifully well into the hollows and forget it. If you want it more of a blown out application from bronzer, you can get it from soft cheek because it does have that splay and beautiful movement on the skin. So I had to include soft cheek because I reach for it so much and it's just one of those brushes that have found itself in my must have cheek brush selection because of the bristle length, the density type, and Sonya G, if you don't know who she is, my goodness, thank goodness for her blog, SweetMakeupTemptations.com, that came in clutch when creating this list because there are a few brushes on this list that are discontinued and I totally forgot when they released, but Sonya basically archives a lot of her collection and thanks to her impeccable detailing, I know what brushes are what. <laughs> I would recommend that you check out her blog. I will post the link down below so you can have tons of fun in just diving into her descriptive detail about Fude and her Fude collection. Ooh, this next brush, my goodness. Creme de la creme. The Tonsedo AQ20 Round Flat Red Squirrel. Red Squirrel is even softer than Gray Squirrel. And you're like, what in the world would I use this for? You know what? If you have that color in your collection of, of bronzer or blush that you just need it to be soft, you want it to just have that float effect, that air light effect, can you see how this moves across the skin? And round flat, I feel, offers a slight advantage over round because it's easier to feel where the cheeks are with that flat surface, right? So if you're a beginner and you're just diving into brush land, you can just intuitively feel where the color will go because of that flat round design. But to have this in red squirrel, my goodness. And as I said before, it's not so small that you can't use it for all over powder. And if you if you like powder, but you don't use it often because sometimes it appears heavy, this just lightly coats the skin in a manner that's feather light. It's like fairy dusting powder on your face nearly undetectable and it doesn't disturb your foundation because it's so soft again softer than gray squirrel and it is delicate that is the disadvantage right so if you are using a wet type of foundation i would recommend that you let it set first because the excess makeup could be damaging to the bristles or I would recommend that you gently wipe this on a microfiber towel or a tissue to release the excess makeup so it doesn't stay on the bristles. But my goodness, this, this really changed. So dramatic. This changed my life in terms of discovering a brush like this and also discovering the lay down. I've never encountered before something 
softer and silkier than gray squirrel. The just the delicate nature of the blend unlike anything I have in my collection. So this, if you haven't tried Red Squirrel, and there are Red Squirrel powder brushes that are super expensive. This is expensive too, but you could use this for both, right? All over the face and your cheek tasks. So if you were wondering, it's worth it. It's worth it, especially if you have super sensitive skin, if you wanted something softer than Gray Squirrel, if you wanted a lighter application, the AQ20 will do you right. Next, we have the beloved Chikohoto F04 Highlight Cheek. Some of these brushes in the list, on the list, excuse me, grammar, are highlight cheek in between, right? And I like that. I can't bypass uh, an angled brush, you know, because these types, I feel so beautiful in the hollows. A lot more plush than what we previously just saw, right? But that's why this is... Silver Fox, by the way. Silver Fox is soft but plush. It's that bristle that feels like it's hugging the contours of your face. And although it's more dense than what we saw previously, it still glides over the skin. It's unlike anything I've encountered before using Silver Fox. It's incredible. The cushion nature of this type of bristle. And the fact, again, it won't move your foundation. It will just beautifully place whether, again, why I love the angle, bronzer, contour, or blush, you could pounce this on instead. It, it has a beautiful quality about it, the way it moves across the skin. Again, without disturbing foundation and the angled design, I feel not easier to use. It really all depends on the individual, right? But I think someone who is getting used to applying cheek products will find it easy to just feel the angle fit nicely into the hollows. And also the rest of the brush head just hugs the contours of your cheek and will beautifully place color there while diffusing at the same time. Because again, it's just so soft that it's not going to appear uneven or splotchy on the skin whatsoever. Now I realize that I'm looking at another brush right now and I'm just gonna put it on the list, shame on me, and I, I have to, I absolutely have to. It is the Chikohoto Takimori T4 Cheek Brush. This is round, Psychoho Goat Hair, longer, a little longer, I think, than the RC2, hello, focus. The size, I feel lovely for blush application as well as bronzer. You know, this is the brush head size that's in between, okay, a small cheek brush and a powder brush where I feel you could also, why not, use to set your foundation or possibly apply a powder foundation, right? You got a wide surface area here, moderate density, beautiful length and because of the density and the bristle type it might pick up a little more and it will than squirrel right so if let's say you're dealing with the hourglass holiday palette those baked powders that a softer brush like the aq20 ain't going to pick up as much unless you want that lighter application but if you want a little more then you would pick a psycho goat hair brush type that's going to get a little more product out of the pan and onto your skin but it's still going to appear even smooth and blurred. So this is just phenomenal. You know what, I'm gonna get that palette right now. I actually have Gucci's Coral and Fidel Surgeons' Singe. I'm just gonna strike against, look up the pickup, these two blushes here, and look how it just moves across the skin. But the pickup is amazing, and it's gonna smooth out the application. I'm telling you, this brush, the whole T-series, the uh, Takumi series, from Chikohoto is outstanding. It's one of their best, and I think if you're just getting into Fude and you encounter Chikohoto for the first time, it is mostly Psycho goat hair. They have their Z-series, which is Squirrel, but the T-series, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. So I had to include it in this list. T4, staple. Originally, I was going to include Refers 37, and it reminds me of Chikohoto's T4, except a lot smaller, a little more dense, 
because the bristles are shorter. Same psycho goat hair type. This is going to be a little more aggressive in terms of the pickup because again, the bristle length is shorter and you got a little more density here. But man, I have to give it to their original number five because again, their versatility or its versatility rather in not only you applying cheek products, but powder on the rest of your face unmatched. We got flat on both sides, but the fluff factor and the taper here, I feel makes it ideal, especially the taper. When you have this angle available to you on a brush, you could just pounce blush on in a fashion that's again, more perhaps accessible to one who's not comfortable with the swirl and twirl quite yet. Although you could swirl and twirl your hearts away with this type of a brush. And also the pinched shape allows for a better feel into the hollows and then you could take that those soft edges around to soften the blend if you like you could even tap a little big for highlight but if you are in a jam and this is the only brush that you have then tap away also just to finish off any powdering you could even buff because it has enough movement not as much movement as let's say the soft cheek because clearly you can see the difference in brush length but if you need to, again, you could just take that swirl and twirl. You can tap. So I feel the number five from the Refer line is a great intro brush to one who wants to get into Fude. And then you can graduate to more premium types of bristles. If you want to get into the gray squirrel and the red squirrel is there for you. But in the meantime, you want to practice a great brush to start with. Next, we have the Chico Hodo Passion Series Cheek Brush PS2. This is with Sokoho Goat. Not as soft as Psycho, but still soft soft. I like the round ferrule and it's very plush. It has beautiful movement across the skin and I think the brush head size appropriate also for loose powder or even pressed powder application. Maybe not for under the eyes because it's quite big for that area but for the rest of the face and again the round dome shape I feel makes it easy to toss around the face quickly and the smaller brush head great for contour and bronzer as you can see and just to buff the edges of that application you could get it here in the center on and on and on and the color i adore the color mirrored magenta finish for the ferrule brushed finish for the handle you have this groove here on the design so not only is it utilitarian but it's just beautiful in terms of the design the passion series i think is solid from the chico hodo line takumi i love because that has such a zen quality about it and it's straightforward also but the passion series if you want a little more color in your collection versatility and it being practical i will take a look at the ps2 i had to dip in to the sonogy archives for this one this is from the Beautylish and Chico Hodo collaboration from their 2018 Noel Naj holiday set. This is the cheek brush from the collection, Psycho Ho Goat Hair. And what I find unique about this brush size and design, one that you can probably categorize for both cheek and highlight, is that it's flat ish, but it has a more pronounced taper. Fantastic for blush because the more pronounced tip I feel floats lovely around the cheek area but also offers a little more precision through the hollows of the cheeks if you wanted to use the tip of the brush but you could also place product here on the taper right so you feel where the product can go because of that slanted edge and you could just tap some highlighter here because of that more pronounced tip and has less bristle as you approach the top of the brush not as much product will deposit there on your cheekbone so that offers more control for highlight highly highly versatile type of a brush and i had to include the shape with the flat rounds and the regular rounds because you can't go wrong with this type of a brush listen you could even because of the taper you could take it under the eyes i know it's big for under the eyes but listen a lot better than if you just have the round brush and one of those things where you just got one brush under the eye, blush, highlight, contour all over, and you could swirl and twirl easily around the face for setting, for finishing. So if you have this collection, I'm sure you adore it because the choices of brushes in that collection I think are phenomenal and, and basically what you need to, for a complete face.
incredible. We got the Wayne Goss from the Artist Collection. This is a large brush, a mixture of gray squirrel and psycho goat hair. Beautiful collaboration, harmonious bundle because you got the silkiness from the gray squirrel, but you got that pick up and blend from the psycho goat. Best of both worlds in one beautifully designed brush, round, but it has this lovely taper. You know I love the taper because again, the tappity tap, you feel where the product is going. The tip makes it easy to move around the skin. You can also place that taper through the hollows of your cheeks and then the rest of the bristles. Again, this design makes it incredibly easy to buff and blend the edges of your application. And because of the brush head size, you could also apply powder around your face, a little big for under the eyes, but heck, if you wanted to try, you just get right here. Tap, tap, tap. And the construction of the handle, very much an old to Fude calligraphy design with the wood or the exposed wood rather. The brush itself just lends to that experience, right? But I had to include it in this collection because every time I use it, my cheek routine is just incredibly easy. I can pick up all of my blushes, my bronzers and my highlighters and just use this one brush for all those tasks and the end result is flawless. And I might as well stick to this design because Wayne released his artist series. Maybe double check the Goss edit. So this is all Psycho Goat hair compared to gray and Psycho Goat. The advantage you have with just a Psycho Goat is a little more resilient in terms of you can technically use this with liquid products. And I have done that in the past where applying foundation with this brush, because it's not as dense as other Wayne Goss brushes, it's going to soak up more foundation than maybe one would prefer. But I think great for like those liquidy types of formulas that you just need to whisk across the skin quickly. But this is also phenomenal, as you saw with the artist brush, to pounce on blush, to carve in bronzer, to maybe tap on some highlighter, toss around loose powder, pressed powder, even powder foundation, albeit not as much coverage as you would get from a more dense brush if you wanted that result. But I think great perhaps if, let's say you wanted to apply a tinted moisturizer or a light foundation, but then wanted to go in with a powder foundation, but using a dense brush will yield too much coverage. You can use this brush to pounce on a little less, but just enough. So the coverage will be right at the center and it won't look heavy on the skin. So I had to include these, these two brush head sizes and design, you like you can't go wrong. They feel so easy when applying products on the skin. And I feel that you can get like that unmuddy look you know, from all these brushes, 100%. But when you're dealing with this brush head size, perfect for loose powder complexion, types of application to all the cheek stuff right here. Now, this next one is more of a highlight brush, but I had to include it. This is the Tonsato YSS14 highlight brush, all gray squirrel. Very small, very small. You can see that it just beautifully places highlight here on the cheekbone. That's obvious. What I think this has an advantage with is also cheek application because there is a satisfaction for, for me, I don't know why, when you use a small brush with such beautiful mobility, okay, across the skin that you just have that toss around, oh, feel where you're applying blush, right? You can just move the blush wherever you want on the apples of your cheeks. You could carry it higher. You could then bring the highlighter. Also, okay, if you wanted, if you wanted a little, if you wanted more of a precise delivery of bronzer, because of the small brush head size, you can concentrate that application into the hollows, but because it's gray squirrel, it won't pick up as much as goat. So you have that advantage and you have the dial in your hands to turn up a little, 
a little bit, but not too much, so the end result still appears soft, but you got a little more of a gradient there, right? And if you wanted to apply that same kind of a thing, hold on, let's say you got Paradise Glow nearby. If I take this, this color, it just lightly envelops whatever region I wish to apply this powder. And again, the gray squirrel offers you that tiptoe effect, okay? It won't overwhelm your skin. Your cheeks won't look heavy. You just have that capability to layer softly, right, if you wanted. Oh my goodness. And then if you wanted to pick up another cheek brush, let's go in with the Chikohoto Passion series to get a stronger buff because remember, this is Sokoho Goat. So it's gonna have more of a blend effect on the skin than Gray Squirrel, as you saw from Tonsado. This has a little bit of, of pearl. So if you wanted to diffuse that pearl, you could use maybe the Passion Brush to diffuse that out, even though it's a cheek brush. You see what I'm saying? So no matter how many cheek brushes you have, it, they have, they will find a role in your routine, 100%. Ooh, next up, we have the Hokuro from the Sora series, the GC7 Gray Squirrel. This is marketed as a face brush, but you can clearly see because of its size, will work beautifully as a cheek brush. Not only for the blush, but you see, listen, right here, look how it just hugs the contours. But at the same time, this slant, naturally you'll place more product here or it will naturally pick up more product how you pounce it in the pan. But because of how the brush splays, this top portion of the wedge will diffuse that application. That's why I love wedge brushes so much because it's like a put downer and a blend outer all at the same time. You could feel again that embracing of the wedge and the smaller handle, all right? This design in particular, in general, as you will see in many Fude brushes, the long ferrule, but the shorter brush handle, fantastic for travel, but also I think ideal for beginners to use because you are closer to your face. So you have more of that tactile experience, right? You could feel where the brush is in relation to your face. You feel a little more confident in that application versus you need something longer, you're further away. And this is where I think experience is more emphasized, where if you, especially if you're a makeup artist, that you could be further away from your client's face and see what's going on. When using a shorter brush, you maybe get a little more myopic, but if it's on yourself, that's where I feel shorter handles have an advantage. So the Hokuro Sora series is fantastic. That entire line has a short bristle design, or excuse me, short handle design. And this in particular, I love the density. It's not too light, but not too heavy either. And because it's gray squirrel, I think it's gonna pick up a little more than other gray squirrel brushes out there with a lighter density. So you could pick up a little more product if you want. Next up is the Bishoto BC01 cheek brush. Psycho goat hair dyed. You got flat round, a little bit shorter, yeah, on the bristle length, but you see it's pinched. The pounce, I, I'm sure you immediately thought about pouncing blush on. And the advantage you have with using a soft bristle, because you might think, well, if you pounce something on, is it really gonna blend? Yes, if you have a brush like this. It's so soft that the powder beautifully places itself with that tap around. Also, if you want it in with the bronzer and or contour, but it has, I think, the length lends itself to beautiful blending at the same time. And I think this is a great brush head size, loose powder, pressed powder, right? It can maneuver across the skin well, across your features well. So you you have the opportunities are endless with the B Shadow cheek brush. Okay. Next is Mizuho's MB114. Technically again, like the Tonsado YSS14 cheek highlight, but this is Pine Squirrel and Pony. Not gonna be as soft as Gray Squirrel or even Psycho Goat. But what I find unique about this brush design is the off-kilter taper, right? So you got a uh, it's hard, you see how the 
point is a little off to the side it's like unilateral so you got more of a pronounced taper on this side and i feel that lends itself to beautiful placement here on the cheeks but also can be great for under the eyes as well as what this brush is originally designed for highlight but listen you can't pass up an opportunity for more of that pronounced or precise bronzer and contour application here with this type of a brush design because it just swirls and twirls its way right in the hollows. I mean, you got no choice. You feel where it got to go. And then you could also trace some here along the edges of the nose. Mm -hmm. So this one is not as expensive. It's not as premium. And yes, it's not gonna be as soft, 100%, but I think because it's still hand bundled, the result will still be beautiful versus you have a brush that's cut on the edges, right? It's the muddiness we're trying to avoid, friends. You know, you know. If you have Fude and you hear Chikohoto Z series, one of the creme de la creme brush lines out of all the brush lines. When I first got this brush, I think this was the first time also that I used Gray Squirrel. I immediately recognized its value, its role, especially because when first using Psycho Goat Hair, when buying Wayne Goss's Anniversary Set Volume 2, using that bristle type for the first time, going into the Z series, my goodness. I picked this one out because of the taper and the longer bristle length because look how it just floats on the skin it's like you're painting you're painting your blush on the watercolor effect the z series delivers when applying blush products or even okay bronzer i would say bronzer more than contour mm, that's not true contour for sure it's just going to be a lot softer right in the end result which is something you might want maybe you don't want heavy shading or a heavy dose of bronzer, but you want just enough. And the diffusing capabilities of the Z4, I know, all over the face too. Listen, powdering your foundation, much like how I described when dealing with Tonsedo's AQ20, wouldn't use this on a wet foundation. I wouldn't use this to set wet foundation either. I will wait for it to set or not use as much and then go in with the Z4 to lightly set. But my goodness, the, the Z series, unparalleled. It's just incredible. Z series, you can't go wrong. If you are wondering, wow, what brush should I get? I do like the Z4 in terms of versatility. Because of this taper that still exists on the design, you can definitely tap on some highlighter, especially if you have that highlighter, for instance, in Pat McGrath's originally released holiday face palettes. That highlighter formula, woo, if you need a little less of that, the Z4 will pick up just enough. You tap it onto those cheekbones and just indulge in the end result you'll you know what i'm talking about if you have this brush you know what i'm talking about this brush is unfortunately discontinued but i still wanted to include it in my collection or on my list rather look at it this is from the premium series koyudo p02 cheek brush gray squirrel and sokohoko so much like what i described with wayne's artist brush how it's a mixture of both in that case, Gray Squirrel and Psychoho. This is Gray Squirrel and Sokoho. So you got a little more of like that. It's a little more stiff, but it has beautiful flow at the same time. And the brush head size, again, is great for all over powdering, right? But right here for you is right here for you for that blush pounce down, okay? And then cutting through the hollows beautifully, maybe not as precise, for a highlight application but that's okay we will you will use this brush for that purpose the short handle and it's it's cute okay it's, it's a cute brush that i don't know i just had to include it because also the salt and pepper look of the bristles with the black brushed ferrule and the white handle it's a sight to behold so everything from how the brush bottom up is designed and the brush bundle type, I think fantastic. And lovely too, 
if you wanted a little more feedback from your brush, right? So we just saw Chikahoto Z series. You see this has a lot more movement, fluidity, but if you want to prefer a little more feedback, you don't want it so fluid, you want a little more, you want it to hold it back a little bit more in terms of how it feels on the skin, then that's why I think having Gray Squirrel and Sokohoke or even Psycho Goat, that type of a blend, can yield maybe more of that precise experience because the more stiff it is, the more precise it will feel when you're blending. So it really all depends on where you fall on that spectrum, right? That's why there's no best brush for anyone because it all depends on your skin type, how your skin feels with brushes, how you want to apply your makeup, how much you want to apply, right? That is going to determine what type of brush you would choose. And I think experiencing different types of bristles and application techniques will lead you to that conclusion. Ultimately though, I think people would just have a wide variety of bristle types and shapes because of that very reason because we have all different types of makeup. But I had to include the Coyote Premium because this also has a place for, again, more of a robust serving of color, but it still feels beautifully silky on the skin when blending. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. Surat, the beloved cheek brush from Surat. This is definitely gray squirrel. But this is such a unique shape to the brush because it's tapered, but it doesn't come to a complete point. It flattens out a little bit. Right, so that's why I feel it's beautiful to swirl blush on as well as to carve through the hollows here. You could even tap highlighter because of the brush head size itself. It's small enough for that task, but also you can lightly dust powder around the smaller regions of your face. Maybe you're one to not apply powder at all, but you're fine with applying just the right amount on certain portions of your face. The brush head size can lead itself to that task. But again, it's just so beautiful for blush. I find myself loving whipping on blush in this manner using the Surat. It's my goodness. You know, I fail to include I gotta do it, hold on, hold on. We can't continue unless we include a Suku brush. Now compared to the Surat, Suku brush is flat. You see, you see the pinched ferrule, Surat is round. This, this has, and I think it's similar to maybe a Z series brush, I forgot. Go to Sonia's blog, she will tell you. This whip-like fashion around the cheeks, this is the brush you would use. This is for the person that doesn't use blush because they're like, I can't, every time I use it, I look like a clown, it never ends up well. If you use this brush, friend, it will open up your entire world because it's not super dense. The brush length is moderate, like moderately long. You see how much movement there is here? and it's a small brush head. So the way it just, look at that, it just dances on your skin and it lays down the right amount of product. It's going to look airbrushed and just enough. The dose is perfect. And I think this is a favorite among cheek brush enthusiasts, like the Suku cheek brush, which I think is discontinued because this is Gray Squirrel. They replaced all their natural hair brushes with synthetic. I do not have the new synthetic brushes, so I can't speak on those. I'm sure it's amazing, but there, listen, the fluidity you feel from this Suku brush, I can't. You could also get away with some highlight. You could get away with some nice bronzing, okay? Yes, it's not going to have that same effect as using a, a, a much bigger brush, you know, clearly from the size. This is Sonia's Jumbo Bronzer, all right? This is gonna get you down with bronzer right away, but you can still get your bronzer on. But the mobility of the bristles and how quickly it moves across the skin, it'll get you bronze looking absolutely. You know, this is something, yeah, we got to include it on the list. I am happy I realized that when filming, you know, every time I say Surat, I want to say Suku and vice versa. My apologies to both brands do not mean to be disrespectful. Sometimes I, my words come out faster than what my brain could process. 
But when I think Surat, I automatically have to <laughs> include Suku. The Suku cheek brush, I remember also reading on one of Sonia's blogs where she compares a lot of cheek brushes to the Suku one, I think. So that's why it was one of those things where I think it was the last set that was available on Harrods. It was a hefty purchase and it was like, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. There's another brush, I think it's the Nakamura, no. It's a Kyureiro brush. It's a Kyureiro brush that I reviewed, Fude Beauty sent it to me. Similar, it's similar to this brush. So if you didn't get your hands on the Suku brush, you can technically, the Kyureiro brush, I think, similar in terms of feel. It's gray squirrel as well in brush length and density. I'll link it down below under the Suku brush so you could take a look. <laughs> Next up, which I hold in a similar category to the Tonsetto YSS14, I hope it's the name. Yes, memory's working. Is the Sonia G Lotus Detail. This brush originally released in a collection, but now you can buy it as a single. Listen, <laughs> this brush, let me look. Undyed and dyed Sekaho Goat. So you got a mixture here. I think it's so unique because it's angled, but it's small and not overly dense. And because of that, it moves beautifully across the skin. I just like sometimes to whip it on in this fashion. And you're able to do it with the Lotus detail. There is a Lotus cheek brush in the collection, which I love as well. That's more of a flat round brush where you could pounce on blush and it's small too, so versatile in that regard. But the Lotus detail is special. It is, I don't have a brush like this in my entire collection. I think its fluidity and quickness lends itself to beautiful cheek application as well as bronzing and contouring. Maybe more for contouring if you're one to prefer that makeup product, right? You could just get it right here on the hollows, but it doesn't pick up as much because again, it's very lightweight in nature. and the way it moves across the skin again is i'm running out of words the brush head size small but can get a lot done and the design like look at this beautiful gradient okay and the mirrored lilac ferrule i had to include it is again when i was picking out my brushes and i remember this was a brush that i would bring along with me to Maddie's house, to Bay's house. It, it always found itself in my to-go brush roll because you could just do so much with its one brush, right? And it's easy to clean as well. So those were the, the characteristics that really stuck to me when using Lotus Detail and why I wanted to include it because I do think it's a unique brush and it was created by Sonia G. So Sonia, when she creates her brushes, she usually creates ones that she doesn't feel already exists in other Vude collections. So anytime she releases a shape, I'm in and I understand. And I think you would understand too, if you use the Lotus Detail, if you have it, you know, friend, Share down below why you love the Lotus Detail. Any of these brushes that you have, please. I would love to know. The last Sonia G brush I have, this was from her Face Pro collection. It is the Nochige Pro, inspired by a calligraphy brush. You see, this is this is the most pronounced taper brush that I have in my collection, right? The, the one next to it was probably the Beautylish and Chikohoto collaboration, not even Wayne's brush because you can see the taper starts a lot lower. It's almost like a, a flower bud, right? The beauty in the design itself, whew, no words. You can see the pounce. You see the pouncing capabilities. The minute you saw this brush, you're like, yes, pounce it. Also, fantastic to carve in some bronzer, all right? Or for more precise application, you can rely on the tip of the brush to place the bronzer here in a pr more precise fashion, but you see its capability to whip around and just swim across the skin. It's incredible. And also, I'm sure you probably figured it out, the loose powder all over, baby. Just get it on your great size for both face and cheek, but the shape itself is beautifully unique. I love this brush i believe it's dyed sokoho goat oh so soft my goodness and versatile 
brush head size, not too big, not too small, medium, beautiful density, great flow, more pronounced taper, can't ask for more. This is a limited edition series brush. This is Hakuhodo from their 2019 Christmas collection, their, their teak brush. This is ash squirrel and goat hair. I love me a paddle-like brush, much like Tonsedo's AQ20, right? Flat on both sides. And why I love a paddle-like brush for blush, <laughs> try to get that out 10 times fast, it just whips it on like paint, right? But then you have the flatter surface area to get precise with your contour or your bronzer, but you also have that surface area for highlight. Because, But the paddle-like design, I think lovely to apply a little bit of powder here on the outer edges of your cheek products. If you want it, you could get through the brows easily, around the brows easily. So the brush head size and the combination of the ash, squirrel, and goat, I think makes it incredibly unique. And the fact that you could use it with a number of powder products, yes, but you have that medium type of lay down. Not too much, not too little, just enough. And of course, I'm happy that I picked up this collection in 2019. Is because there's a brush in there that looks like a fan. Oh, I love that one too. I don't know where it is though. I gotta look for it. But I wanted to include this brush because generally, as you saw, I do like me a flat round. More flat than others here in the collection. You got a little more pronounced flatness, if you will. Ooh, but the way it just whips on that blush, look at it, had to have it. BK Beauty and a Sephora brush that's no longer available, but I wanted to show these two sizes. So we got BK Beauty's 109 Mini Contour just released last year. This is synthetic, and this is the Sephora Pro Foundation. It's actually a foundation brush but I use it for cream blush. This is the Fond de Ton 47. You got little strawberries on there. Look how cute that is. These are very similar, but the Sephora brush you see, not as much bristle as the BK Beauty one, but the flat surface area from this highly angled brush lends itself well to pound cream blush around the cheeks and up towards the hollows. And I use this brush today to apply Final Surgeon Sizz Skin Spark Blush Bomb in Singe, it beautifully applies cream blush. And I, I basically use this brush for that very application because synthetic, I think more resilient with cream products, easier to clean. You can clean them more often than natural hair brushes. Natural hairs are more delicate than synthetic. And I do appreciate BK Beauty releasing a smaller version of their contour foundation brush, which is quite large, but understandably, since that is a foundation brush, gets your foundation on quickly on the face. But if you wanted something more precise, whether it's cream blush or maybe you wanted a smaller brush for your foundation application purposes, I get why you would grab the 109. But I in particular love this brush to pounce on my cream blushes. It's just a surefire way to get that smooth blend when applying cream blushes on my cheeks. We're almost done. You're like, my gosh, this is still an hour. <laughs> Wayne Goss's 02 brush from his Volume 2 anniversary set, Psycho Goat. You know, your simple, everyday, small tapered brush. Yes, one can immediately see its use for under eye powdering, but I love it for blush also because of the teardrop shape. You got precise placement here through the hollows, but then you have beautiful placement here for highlight on your cheekbones. So I needed to include this brush because again, this is my first encounter with Psycho Goat, with Fude, and I, again, just recognize immediately the beauty of uncut bristles, the softness, the blend, and how everything looked blurred and smooth in the finished result. And this brush head size particularly, I think useful for cheek application. As you saw, it covers the entire region, blush, contour, highlight, and bronzer. Sure, it might be small for bronzer, but some people like to apply bronzer as their sculpting shade, right? It really all depends on you. There are no rules, but I understand if you wanted a smaller brush, still with great movement to place in the hollows to get a heavier gradient of color. So I had to include zero two. Ooh, this is, again, this is the Beautylish Yano series, zero three brush. This is also cheek and highlight. 
and it's gray squirrel. But you know how I love the paddle designs. I can't help it. So in comparison to the Tonsedo and the Hakuhodo, the Yano series has like more of a pronounced, it almost looks like a diamond, right? Not as paddle-like in nature like those two. But because of that, okay, the whip-like fashion and how quickly it applies blush is phenomenal. How it cuts through the hollows easily. And right there for your highlight, right there for your under eyes. Mm -hmm. So this is what I would consider to be an all-around brush. Heck, I would even use the Lotus Detail for under eye because it can fit. So the Yano Series 03, again, lends itself to great traveling purposes because it can cover so many tasks, but it's not a huge brush. Heck, you can even use it to whip around loose powder if you wanted. Sure, it's not going to be as fast as maybe the Kiyaki Pro or Niji, Kiyaki Niji, or even... <laughs> the buffer, right? But you can still get it on. You just gotta whip and twirl a little more and that's it. If that saves you room in your brush roll, you just apply loose powder, wipe. Bronzer, wipe. Blush, wipe. Highlighter, wipe. Instead of having to use three different brushes, okay? You just got this one. And because it's gray squirrel, I think light to moderate density, and because of that, nice pickup of color. Right. If you want more color, yes, you're going to have to use either squirrel, a denser brush, or just say another bristle type altogether like goat. But if you want the application to still appear soft, gray squirrel is the way to go. But the brush head size and how it's cut or how it's bundled rather is absolutely perfect. <laughs> Second to last, this is a classic brush. I don't know if it's still available, but this is from Esam. They're X. 52. Now, it's not premium goat hair. They say premium goat hair. This might be Sokoho goat because it doesn't feel as soft as Psychoho. But I love, again, it reminds me of the Nochige Pro in terms of its more, its lower taper because this taper goes a little lower than Wayne's artist brush you see so it has more of a pronounced tip and again i love that for pouncing on blush for getting in some bronzer here and then taking it around for a ride for that blurring but also fantastic for all over powdering the medium brush head size i think makes it versatile and the goat hair also fantastic pickup fantastic lay down not as soft as psycho hogo i just want to put that out there because i know some people have sensitive skin and if you feel this is going to be prickly it might feel prickly to you right but if you want something that's fast in terms of getting the product on your skin and blending it quickly this is considered a pro level tool and a brush i included in my esum collaboration brush edit so this is why it has a special place in my heart. And although it might be considered, it is marketed as a face brush, I use it too for blush, so I had to still include it. Are you still here, fam? I'm amazed. <laughs> this is the Koyuro Yoshiki Series Y2 Cheek Brush, Psycho Goat Hair. Look how dense and small this brush is, okay? Compared to Refer's 37, it doesn't spread out as wide, even compared to Surratt's cheek brush. You see it's a little more, it's a little more stumpy, right? But you're like, why would why would I use a stumpy cheek brush? Listen, this is still great to apply because it's Psycho Goat, you can use this with cream or liquid. And because it's more on the denser side, it's not going to absorb as much product as it would if it had a longer bristle there. So you could pounce on cream. You could even have a more precise serving of color through the hollows. So this might be a little more limited. I understand, but I still think it's so beautiful. The golden wood, the brushed ferrule in black. And again, the density and the short bristle length. I don't know. I, you, I do use this also for foundation because if you wanted to get in there and apply foundation in this manner then the round design lends itself to that circular application to really work the product into your skin but it also can be there for you to get some cream blush on if you wanted or even some cream contour or bronzer so i wanted to include this still because you know one of those brushes where 
I feel it's unique in terms, like I said, the brush length and density. It's like a kind of like a beauty blender on a <laughs> on a brush simply because of how it's designed. But man, that whole series is fantastic. But I had to include this because I do think there's a place for it in someone's cheek brush collection. Even if it's a little more niche than the others here, when it works or when you're using it, you will understand 100%. And that, whew, that is it. If I missed one, you're like, what happened to that one? What happened? I'm, it's a favorite, I'm sure. You can comment down below, we'll discuss. But I wanted to present these because again, when I saw them, when I use them, it's always an ethereal experience. These are such beautiful designs. They're diverse in terms of the bristle type, the density, the brush length, everything. Like you, you can find a role for any of these brushes. No matter which brush I pick up, no matter which one I decide to use, the blend unparalleled. That's the thing. Like I don't have to be overly picky. I could, I could pick up any one of these figure it out, the makeup will look flawless. So that's why I wanted to share. Let me know what your favorite cheek brushes are down below, fam. I'll see you down in those comments. But until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial <laughs> brush extravaganza. Or live, we'll have the next one coming up on my membership channel. Take care and I will see you again soon.